So this is Yuki Hiro's mid-range combo control Ragnora deck. I'm not entirely sure where on the spectrum it lands. It's kind of a blend of everything. Um, it's pretty mainstream, especially uh, pre-patch 193, where decks like this were all the rage, mostly Varth, but sometimes Ragnora. Um, crushing it with... Sorry, this is the Varth deck. Someone else was playing Ragnora. I'm half confusing myself. This is mid-range Varth. It's very mid range It's definitely... This is a Saurian Finality deck with Drogon and Juggernaut and a couple of other cool tech choices. Um, and three copies of Rust Crawler, which I've not seen before. I think that's pretty clever. Um, so this this is this deck is not particularly budget. I don't think this seems to be lacking any cards. There's lots of play sets of legendaries and so on. This person has clearly made all their tech deck decisions on purpose. Um, so in light of that, the Rust Crawlers are actually really interesting. I've played Rust Crawler before in formats where you know budget formats myself, and when I was new to the game, or um, I've played it in Highlander and so other people where. Artifacts can be hard to get rid of, and, you know, you have to start scraping the barrel for playables uh, that actually fit your deck's plan after a while to some extent. So, uh, seeing Rust Crawler as a 3 of in, like, a ordinary, presumably optimized list is quite interesting. And I assume it's because when your opponent has an artifact in play, smashing your face into their face repeatedly is quite difficult. Um, I think normally people will play Healing Mystic in that slot, which is probably better, but this deck does pack plenty of healing, so it's not it's not a huge loss. And the utility of Rust Crawler obviously can gain you a lot more than eight life if you play it with a target. Um, but I'm not sure this is really the meta for it. Like there aren't a ton of artifacts flying around right now. We have seen a Soul Grumbar deck um, in a couple of the rounds today, but um, normally on ladder, I don't I don't think artifacts are at a high right now. Like Argian isn't really a thing these days that I've seen anyway. And so that takes out Arclight Regalia, which is the most important artifact and the scariest artifact in the game. Hooray! Uh, more people entering. Oh, of course it counts, Sahun, don't worry about it. Um, you, can, you can start whenever. I think if someone had accidentally typed Sojourner as a message by itself five minutes ago, I'd have let them in. It's fine. Um... So looking at the Petruvian deck, oops, there we go, this is Alex 55's Vitruvian that we just saw in action. This is a Sophie's Choice mid-range deck with lots of cards that punish your opponent for positioning in particular ways um, to kind of force them to play into one or the other. So um, this deck is a bit odd in that the pilot has trimmed Blood of Air and trimmed Thunderhorn, which seem like two of the most important cards in the deck, and put a bunch of stuff that looks like it probably should be in the main but couldn't fit in the sideboard, rather than having a sideboard of like properly scary cards. In general, I think building sideboards is very difficult, and one of the it's a common theme. I certainly uh, both this week and last week we saw decks that had sideboard plans that were kind of spirited but maybe didn't work, or sideboards that were just extensions of the main deck with stuff that could, didn't make the cut. Um, it looks like, I would say Yuki Hero has the best sideboard I've seen. Some of it is just stuff that isn't in the main, but that's because the cards that are in the main and the sideboard are, like, they deserve to be two elves in the main. You've got Plasma Storm, the now nerfed homeostatic rebuke, and a deck full of minions, Tagete, who isn't always good. Um, maybe two of the best decks in the meta. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. These are, these are both close to the top, I think, from what I've seen. Um... And certainly both decks have a lot of powerful things going on. So we're going to see a significant jump in the overall power level of this match, I would say. Um, yeah, I, I, I like Yuki Hero's sideboard a lot. I'm not sure what the three EMPs are for, but I'm sure they had something in mind. Um, and I I definitely like the way they've clearly laid it up with like, I need this for this matchup, I need this for this matchup. Um, I want to adjust my copies of these in XYZ matchup. Which is how, in my opinion, how a sideboard should be built. Um, maybe I'll do a strategy shot about that at some point. <clears throat> Whereas this sideboard, these cards, again, most of these either should be in the main or just should be cut. I don't think you want three copies of Scion's Second Wish, like, ever. Um, three copies of Whisper of the Sands is also pushing it. 
um, with only nine obelisks. And, you know, the card can be clunky. Reassemble is pretty good, but... Um, I, th I think that one makes more sense as a sideboard card, but I don't think you need three copies. They aren't always going to have three dispels. And you don't always have the two mana to spare to cycle. Overall, though, I think both these decks are well constructed. I think, um, from what I've seen so far, they've been well piloted. And I think this is going to be an exciting match. Um, interesting vet deck switch between Obelisk and Midrange Lost in the Desert build. Almost two different builds. Yeah, I actually agree with that. I think I think it's more that so at least when I build Vitruvian decks, I think there's there's like two different decisions. One of them is the overall plan of the deck. And one of them is what two drops you play. So there's like the obelisk package and the golem package, both of which is like mostly two drops and maybe a three or two. Um and so you can kind of swap between them to do different things. And the obelisk package has its own couple of support cards like Dune Caster and stuff. And the golem package has its payoff, like, you know. And each one has their strengths and weaknesses. And then the rest of the deck is usually something completely different. Like, I've seen people play golem artifact combo. Because you get these two drops and then you cycle, basically, using um, Dream Shaper. So you go Metallurgist, Dream Shaper, draw two cards. Get the two drops out of your hand without actually shrinking your hand. So you still get to make plays to the board, find your combo pieces. And you can play like obelisks with obelisks go quite naturally with the positional cards because your opponent will try and run away from them or use a removal from them that then they can't use to kill a thunderhorn. Um, but you can do like you can do obelisk combo. You can do golem like fly vet. You can do you know this is, it's like building vet decks is weird. Even things like control Cipheron, you know, do I play golems or do I play obelisks as my two drops? Because you still need them. You need to do something. You can't just play a bunch of... Ex like, you can't really do a magma and just play loads of expensive cards um, and tie it together with AoE and healing. So going back to this game, I don't like Drogon early. Uh, I think playing Drogon on curve is awful. Uh, I guess you can hide it in the back or you can use it just to remove an obelisk on turn three. So maybe not as bad as it would normally be. Um... It doesn't... As long as you avoid Falcius, I guess it can be okay. <coughs> and worst comes to worst, it can try and trade with the Thunderhorn. Flash isn't doing anything in this hand. And I think... Yeah, I think Rebuke is risky. I think you replace Flash and one of these. Um, but maybe you... So I think you... I think you play Metallurgist on turn one to give yourself the option of Lava Slasher. And then I think you play this on turn two anyway. Uh, I guess you could play the Drogon. It's not really worth it, though. This does also let you punch the Thunderhorn to death. Actually, the more I think about this, the more I like it. I think you go turn 1, turn 2, and don't take a Mana Tile, and then turn 3, you take a Mana Tile, either with this or by playing Drogon on it, and then double your general up to 6 attack, and then kill either a Fireblaze Obelisk or a Thunderhorn. Uh, and that means you replace these. And that still allows you to do, you know, give your turn to Lava Slash and Nut Draw and stuff like that. Okay, well we got the Lava Slasher and there's also a Rage Binder for even more value. I don't think I would replace that. I mean, I get what they're going for with like, they can go turn one this and then turn to Rage Binder Natural or turn to Lava Slasher. Both really good lines. So for Alex... Obelisk there. Playing it there is okay. It does mean that only one of these can hit it. Uh, but it gets hugely blown up by this Lava Slash. And I think you do want a position around that. I think you want to play it here. Uh, or even behind you. I basically never play Obelisks aggressively on turn two. Um, I think it's it's just too risky. Um, this basically wins the game. I think Alex is... I want the hook to find Blood of Air, realistically. Um... Was such a massive tempo hit. I think I don't think I like this. I think I would have played Sunsteel and Blood Tear using this Monotile in some arrangement. 
like keeping the sun still away from the two three so that both of these have to attack it and use the blood tear to ping the two three so that you can clear it with xerox later um and this the replace is easily a flash that's pretty good for later so at this point, I guess you punch this and then gain life. You can do this and use this to kill the Falcius for extra tempo, or you can natural selection the Falcius, but I think that's not as good as just using the Lava Slasher for its intended purpose. The other option is you can nat sell this and punch them in the face, but I don't think that's as good. I don't think you overload here I think I think I prefer the the units approach like as long as you play around stars fury to a reasonable extent you know occupy two columns uh, you're not really risking lost in the desert in fact you're not really risking anything I guess stars fury is the best punish here <coughs> and this is playing into stars fury Although most of these units don't die to it, so the Fury will just kill one thing, and that's kind of it. And I think you should uh, attack the Blood Tear Alchemist before playing this, because the, there was some missed healing there. Could be on 25 life here, but that's a quibble. Yeah, I think playing into Star's Fury here is okay for the sake of getting all this stuff down. Although these are far away, I don't think... I don't think it's worth putting these all the way over here just to overload. You can do it this turn anyway. And you draw the Drogon for the punish as well. Uh, this is pretty awkward, actually. From Alex's perspective, I like this play. I think the Sunsteel will die without killing the Lava Slasher, but you can at least clear the Lava Slasher next turn if it attacks you or the Dervish. Um, and that leaves just this kind of relatively out of position Rage Binder and whatever gets deployed here. There's two blood of air already starting to hurt. Oh yeah. Is it better to turtle with an obelisk turn one or walk forward two and place it below or above the general? Um, if I'm going first, I'll put it here in front of me. If I'm going second, I'll put it behind me, usually, unless my opponent didn't play anything on the first turn, because it's very easy for them to just attack it and kill it. That Tegete was a very good draw. Um, it's going to be real hard for Alex to win from here. I don't like the missed attack here, though. I think you just do it. Fault. Fault is a way back into this game. With And with Obelisk, Whisper of the Sands next turn, there can actually be some removal going on. But I think Yuki, uh, I think Yuki is going to deal a ton of damage here. I think you... Well, you smash face, that's five. Stand on this, stand on this. Get in for five here. Four here. Play Drogon in the back. If you really want. And uh, overload, or you can just play it there. I think playing the Drogon aggressively is better. But I can see the arguments either way. I think playing it here plays around Star's Fury a bit more. Um, and gives you a 5 4 that can bash face. So, what do you do now, Alex? I guess you get that obelisk down. And you first wish it first to try and find another one. Maybe you first wish this. Oh, Dooncaster to kill the Drogon. That's good. Ish. Oh, there's finally been a blood of air drawn. A bit late now, I think. And I assume this is lethal in some way. Let me think. Punch that. Yeah, just punch that. The Rage Binder clears the Dooncaster, and both of these can come in for lethal. Come on, Yuki, don't show off. Stop it. <laughs> don't get cute. Just attack. Move in. Don't risk anything. There you go.
Awesome. So, looking at the sideboards again. What do you bring in here? Just nothing, right? I guess the Scion's second wish is okay for helping pressure. Everything else is kind of bad. I suppose you can use Reassemble to set up um, a Cataclysmic Fault turn where you pick up an Obelisk and then play Fault plus the zero mana Obelisk um, on curve. That might be good. Is that better than any of these other cards? Rushes, maybe? Kinet kinematic Projection, maybe? Blood Tear, maybe? Cards that are unlikely to do a lot. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's fine. Doesn't really excite me. On Yukihiro's side, definitely would bring in that Plasma Storm. Because we saw obelisks and plasma storm is fantastic against them and it's also very good at resetting cataclysmic fault buying you several tons emp doesn't stop fault uh, although it's good against obelisks you have plasma storm as well and emp nerfs your own stuff so i probably wouldn't bother uh Targete is okay but usually will be easier to answer than that with falcius dervishes etc spelljammer i feel like yuki is the control in this matchup <clears throat> With more straightforward cards and Plasma Storm being able to answer a ton of um, of Alex's stuff in one hit, I think that puts Yuki in the the driver's seat if the game goes long. So I don't think you want spell jammers. Um, I think you want to. I think you want to curve out up to the big stuff and dominate the game with raw card power and creature mass rather than. Trying to get funky and like tempo out your opponent. I mean, Cataclysmic Fault's very hard to beat, but like Homeostatic Rebuke and Plasma Storm can both act as resets. I don't know if you keep two Rebukes in. I think maybe you cut one for a Plasma Storm because there'll be occasions where it doesn't do anything. And you didn't see... Like from Yuki's perspective, their opponent is basically just playing Dervat. Um, they didn't see much beyond Obelisks, Dervishes, Fault. So... The Rebuke's okay, because it can clear it can clear the tokens pretty easily, but uh, it's bad against actual obelisks. Rust Crawler is an easy cut, so there's space in the deck, so I guess you could just bring in I don't know, maybe an EMP. Leave the Rebuke in. Bring in the Plasma Storm, obviously. Maybe just one jammer as a tempo, but it's it's not that good. Maybe you just leave the Rust Crawler in because it's a cheap creature. You can dispel Creep Tiles. Can you dispel the Sand Tiles? Yeah, you absolutely can, but EMP doesn't. It dispels all minions and generals and uh, destroys all artifacts. So I don't think it even dispels the tiles they're on. It just dispels them. So let's go to the game. This is a pretty nice hand, isn't it? Um... Turn one, turn two probably, but if you're lucky this. So they did bring in the repulses. I guess that's better than nothing, but it doesn't do a ton. Like if you're using a repulsor to repulse a lava slash, you're losing, losing so badly. Because the lava slash has basically already gotten a two for one and it doesn't even die. But it's pretty good if you can use it to set up for something first. Um, the lava storm, the lava storm might be a better turn one play than the than the ethereal. It's kind of, it's more, it's merely okay as a body. The ability is pretty relevant. Like contesting the middle mana tile is quite strong, and. Sometimes I'll move forward and play Lava Storm Obelisk behind me. Um, so that it still contests that middle mana tile with the ability. But is not in range of being hurt. But at that point it, the Dervishes basically don't do anything. Unless you know your opponent's going to be playing really aggressively. So usually I prefer to play it forward. And it might be better to do that just on the off chance that 
natural selection is going to come out, you might as well play the most fragile obelisk first. Um, and if it doesn't die, you can try and protect it with Xerex, the Dervish, and then maybe this or the Thunderhorn if you draw it. I would replace this, and I think I would replace Repulsor Beast. I think being able to go turn 1, turn 2, turn 3, or turn 1, turn 2 is good. And these cards... Like, this is not likely to live. I guess it's more likely than a lot of other things. You might be able to get set up a projection. Um, but my guess would be that this is for later. It's a bit more of a situational card. And you want to be able to replace something looking for cards that actually like help you get ahead. You want Falcus, you want Whisper of the Sands, you want Science First Wish. Play Ethereal here forward for turn 2 Thunderhorn is the play here IMO. Yeah, you don't always get the turn 2 T-Horn, and this is has a high chance of getting natural selectioned. So I'd rather play this, because it defends the middle mana tile, forcing the opponent to play more awkwardly if they don't have removal for it. Um, and if they do have removal for it, you played the 4 health one rather than the 6 health one, and this one's a bit easier to deploy on turn 2, because it can withstand slightly more pressure from the opponent. So I'd replace these and play turn one Lava Storm. <laughs> Place is Thunderhorn. That's so greedy. What are you hoping for? Um, again, plays the obelisk here. I much prefer it here because it can do more. Um, but I guess it doesn't matter because it's going to die anyway. And I definitely would have played the Lava Storm because of what's about to happen, which is it gets natural selection. Now it's going to be much harder to set up the four health obelisk over the um, over the six health one. Obviously, I like Yuki's play here. I don't think you can really do anything else. Got the Thunderhorn back. Hell yeah. Um, I don't think you can play this here. I think it has to go there. I don't know what you're hoping for. <laughs> like, placing it where it can just get attacked is pretty awkward. Like, it's not too difficult. I guess there aren't that many buffs that your opponent's likely to have. They probably don't have greater fortitude, but... Um, yeah, maybe that's okay. Maybe that's safe enough. So for Yuki's side, what do you do here? You could just flash Lava Slash at this. I think that's fine. You get a 4-5. You get Tempo. You can even play the Cryptographer as well, although it doesn't do anything. So let's not do that. You can run away and hope they walk into Plasma Storm. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, although it probably looks better from Yuki's perspective because they didn't see the Thunderhorn skin one. It's still good placement and otherwise you just waste the Obelisk. Well, it's... It's not that good, right? Like, what's it really doing here? Um, I think if you're going to place it where this can hit it, you put it here. Because uh, then it much more reliably protects this monotile. Um, and the center of the board in general. It has a narrower range of spaces where it can position dervishes. Um, flash Cryptographer. That seems like a huge waste. It's not worth spending... An extra card just to give your lava slash a plus two health maybe if you were going to get to overload this turn it would be but like it's not worth emptying your hand that much i think that's that's probably like they were roping and they were they were like oh i should do it like this and got a bit they sort of overthought it would be my guess it's okay t home placement again i don't really like that they're putting it somewhere where this can just attack it um yuki is low on cards but like you're really trying it. I think this needs to go further back. Um, it's too easy for this to get pinged in some way. Um, although, again, I guess those cards aren't really in Yuki Hero's deck. But I don't know if Alex knows that. Um, this is not awkward for Yuki Hero because they have to... That's greedy. Why would you do that? Let's 
It's a lot of face trading. I guess you can take the four. Seems suboptimal though. Ooh, that's science first, which is a good punish. This lost in the desert might actually come up handy here. Um. Oh my. I don't know how much I like the use of blood of air there. I think you. I think it probably is better to first switch this and attack face. Um, not take four damage. And deal additional damage to their face. Keep a thunderhorn that's on three health instead of one. Yeah, you don't kill the rage binder, but it's miles away. Who cares? He's panicking, probably. That Macantor is a pretty good draw. Please move it before attacking. That's good. So now Yuki has lethal... Well, they have lethal anyway. Without needing the Drogon, because they can attack, but... What are Alex's outs to this? So Rash's curse to clear the Macantor is pretty obvious. Then what? Then I guess you body block with Lava Storm, hope to draw something good with Sans First Wish. So I have Falcius. Well, the Falcius doesn't get there. I guess you can hope the Iron Shroud lands in the right place. No, that doesn't even work because the Rust Crawler can just punch it. I think you have to Lava Storm and wish it. No, they didn't have enough mana to play anything they could draw. Yeah, that was that was Yuki's game. Could have run up this with Xerx, repulse of the three four up top the enemy general, buff the T horn attack, hit egg to board clear and four three left. Yeah, that'd be good. But even after the move, I think buffing the T horn was still better. Um, but yeah, your play. I think your play is overall overall the better play. Um, yeah. So instead of moving back with Xerx, you move forwards, play repulsor to move the rage binder next to the enemy general. So now we've got. The 4-5 Lava Slasher, Enemy General, Rage Binder all next to each other. And the Rage Binder can also be adjacent to the Rust Crawler at the same time. And next to Xerix. Xerix kind of nestled in the middle of this curve. Buff the Thunderhorn, attack the Enemy General. Kills all the minions. Xerix kills the Egg. Now there's a 5-3 Thunderhorn. Um, nothing on Yukihira's side of the board. And Xerix has a massive hand advantage. Uh, and like 3 extra mana to make more plays after that. Yeah, I think that would have been good. 